Tiffany and I have uh, known each other most of her life, and uh, we are in love with each other, and uh, she's a great singer. <laughs> Oh, we've kissed. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have. Yeah. No tongue. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Been on the mouth? Could have. Most people don't know who Tiffany is because she was never that famous. She started in 1987 uh, with two hits, could have been, and I think we're alone now, number one hits. She peaked out in 87 through uh, 88, 89, she was fading and uh, pretty much faded out completely that year in the public view. The things I love about living in Santa Cruz are the sociological freedom, the diversity, the positive spirituality, and all the wacky, odd, weird, bizarre, different people that draw the fascists off of others and myself. <laughs> yeah. Former pop sensation Tiffany Darwish, actually I have her last name here, has been followed by one stalker for 11 years. As a 16-year-old, she was forced to get a restraining order against Jeff Dean Turner. They have my whole name in there. Then a 35-year-old, uh, yeah, I was 35 then when that happened, fan who began pursuing her after kissing and hugging her at a concert. Didn't happen quite like that. <laughs> Then one day, she saw him outside her house. I was a little freaked out, to say the least, says Darwish. <laughs> they ever laugh, yeah. I sat in the corner saying, close all the windows. Now she's back in Southern California, and so is her stalker. <laughs> she says, I have to be real careful. Another warm Colorado morning begins. Jogging into work at a very high rate of speed, reading and knowing my environment like a quarterback reading the defense. Getting stronger, faster, better as days go by. Hey, groovy people, this is Gilman McCormick. Hey, after the beep, please leave a name, number, and a brief message. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. The, the thing I love about living here in the Mile High City of Denver is, uh, A, the people, B, uh, it's the altitude. I, up here is it's athlete's paradise, because if, if you train up here in, in the thin Colorado Rocky Mountain air and then go back down to, to like the thick air of like LA, smoke competition easily. Yeah, I just really like to flaunt uh, what, what, what I got and to always better myself. Cupid actually never came around and I've, I've never had a girlfriend before in my life. I, I've never, I mean, I've been in love, um, but I have never had uh, the, the, the same amount of love returned back to me, which, uh, which is very depressing and it hurts like hell. I know she, she won't remember, but, um, but I accidentally bumped into her uh, back this summer of 1989, uh, back when I was living in um, Buena Park, California. Her and I talked for at least like seven hours uh, on the phone. The, the, the difference between me and a stalker, um, is uh, they don't truly love uh, love 
the individual. There's not one thing on Tiffany that I do not love. I mean, theoretically, I love her down, clear down to her bone marrow. When I was in elementary school and uh, Mac then, uh, the, it was just uh, fairly ordinary the way it was treated until about the, the fifth and sixth grade then uh, started to get aggravating and bullying and teasing. <laughs> It got worse through uh, junior high, and then it got uh, uh, worse in high school. Huh. And he's probably used to a, quite a bit of rejection, so it is hard for him to um, trust people maybe and develop uh, enduring friendships. My name is Douglas Haas, and I've known Jeff Turner for 20 years. My friendship with him is very important. Yeah, I genuinely like Jeff. I mean, uh, he's, I enjoy being around him despite his foibles. And uh, it's always interesting. He's got a great sense of humor. I'm actually- Knuckle bonius. Tuk, tuk, tuk. <laughs> Would you like some Reiki and implosion therapy? Tuk, 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 tuk. He has a, a positive attitude to everything, including the most dark and dreary subjects. It's a positive experience for me to be around Jeff. When Jeff was a uh, child, he was growing up on Air Force bases, you know, an Air Force brat. And Merrill Dean Turner was a uh, career military aviator, and he was shot down and killed in Vietnam in September 1967. Both of our fathers died when we were 13, and, and so uh, suddenly, and so it's like a, a, a kind of like a bonding uh, between us, I believe. And maybe we're both kind of slightly emotionally stunted by having had our fathers die at that age. I felt relieved and, uh, and very sad at the same time. Felt very sad because uh, my mother was uh, very tragically uh, damaged by it. My mom married Richard Ralph Truesdale one of my father's friends who'd served with him in the Air Force. Learned to appreciate him, although he was a, a tyrannical, and still is a tyrannical fascist, but he's very good at setting up evil forces and betraying them against themselves and each other. I'm not rough and tough. I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> okay, I don't think this is the show we want here. Uh, Who's we, Lindbergh? Yeah, well, this is... Well, You're the only one that wanted it. Charm. You got the tape in the there? The tape is in there. Uh, at least here you can watch it while you're fast forwarding. What are you looking at? Are you I, fast forwarding? No, I'm not fast Did forwarding. Did you rewind? Uh, I just put it in there. My stepfather, Richard Truesdale, is a model uh, railroad enthusiast. He found two engines that were wired backwards and he had head on collisions. And he had a, a box car he wanted to put something in to haul around, so he broke the door off and stuffed something inside. Got in trouble once, dropped one on the floor, <laughs> and it never and it didn't run right. Of course, being uh, my stepfather, uh, like King Philip II of Spain in the late 1400s, uh, the little things and the great things matter equally. <laughs> so, <laughs> good example there. Yeah. We had banished him. Banished. Yeah, if he's not going to use his head for something besides a hat rack, he's going to, he can't come in here. Yeah, he's got mental problems. He's disabled. Uh, so we tried to cure him by putting him where there was doctors who knew what it was going on. I'm not a doctor. The brilliant sphere, it's like a sphere, a brilliant yeah, sphere. It's going to crack open and light is going to emerge and sear away all the idiocy and stupidity in the universe. Nine. Yeah, It's the cracked ones that let light into the world. Um, but for a demonstration of, of my running capabilities, uh, I'll put on a little show for you guys here. <laughs> um, And that, that I was only, uh, I was only going maybe, maybe about 7%, uh, between 7 and 10% of, 
of my of my actual running speed. A lot of people that were born um, in well, with, with my condition that they're not as uh, athletically inclined uh, as I am. I suffer from what's known as being born intersex, a condition of which uh, a person is born with both genders. Uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, people thought they would go, you're a hermaphrodite, what, what the hell is that? And uh, then I would tell them, and they go, back, back, just to stay away from me, I don't want to know you, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, how would Tiffany feel about uh, about my situation? I know that she would uh, she would accept me for who for who I am. I take uh, what's known as spirolactone, which is a testosterone killer slash blocker. I mean, yes, I go through a monthly period and, and you know PMS and period, just like every biological woman does, including Tiffany, but. I went to uh, Buena Park High School in, in Buena Park, California. Go Coyotes! Yeah! Um, I was involved in, in the Spirit Club. I was, I was also uh, in track all four years. Jeez, I was the most popular person on campus. Um, Back in high school, I was closeted. I was very closeted about it. Um, the price of being uh, being popular. I just finally said, "Okay, enough. I've had enough. I, you know, th th this is actually killing me." Now I'm very much, I'm very open about it. And I don't <laughs> I don't care what people think. Okay, I first met Jeff back in June 2002 when I attended a uh, concert featuring a 1980s uh, teen pop idol singer, Tiffany, the name that she goes by. So I found out he and I have plenty in common besides being Tiffany fans. He and I also have some uh, a neurological disability. Uh, he and I both have a Asperger syndrome. I think of myself as a higher functioning version of, say, Rain Man or Forrest Gump, those fictional movie characters. He immediately knew I had Asperger's because I guess it takes one to know one. Whenever I meet someone with Asperger's syndrome, it does make me feel like I'm not alone. Hmm. It's also uh, called the Little Professor's Syndrome. It's where a person knows all this information and can just talk and talk and talk. He would be utterly clueless that the people that were listening to him were looking for a way to exit. They were looking for the nearest window to jump out. We have a good memory, good photographic memory, good in details, um, good with facts, but uh, we have, but sadly we have poor social skills. Um, we have trouble interacting with people. We have trouble establishing friendships and um, let alone romance, but uh, that's the way it goes. And um, It's easy to have romance, it's just, uh, the other, uh, the young lady or the lady saying yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, there's women in the past, in the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, that I've had, uh, last was 90, nine, last one was 1992, I had a physical experience with. And then there was uh, 85 and one in 87. Yeah. Only one of them I really liked, <laughs> but she went with somebody else. It was a one in 85. I really liked her. I hadn't seen her for years, and uh, she uh, wasn't interested, so... Yeah. <laughs> and out of that, uh, I was redeemed and atoned for by Yeshua. Ha, huh, Mashiach, Jesus Christ. My name is Don Berkmer. I'm the pastor of Living Water Fellowship. I've known Jeff probably about eight years. I, he's a blessing to me here because he always seems to find the best qualities of people and 
he elaborates on that. He is kind-hearted. He is considerate. If he ever meets a person, he is your best friend for life. I've known Kelly now for like 10 years. We met back in 1998. Um, I met him at Bally's Total Fitness. I was working out, and um, he was the janitor there. And um, I don't know, he just came up and we started talking, and the nurturing person in me, I don't know, maybe the fucked up person in me is what attracted me to him. I seen this monstrosity of a, a problem that I could relate within myself, I guess. The whole gay thing, um, I know what it's like to be judged and put down and black sheep, outcast, whatever. So I kind of try to sympathize with her and um, I try not to judge him, which is kind of hard sometimes. Um, then we were friends like for a year or so and we decided to be roommates because you know, he was going to get evicted from his apartment. At the time he drank too much. He wasn't really responsible at budgeting his money. I don't know, I was always trying to mother him or be his parent and it was really hard. When we went out, you know, to gay clubs, it was kind of like embarrassing because he's so different. But as more, the more we went out, I guess the easier it got and it was just me, it wasn't him, it was me, it was my problem. What's kept our friendship going for the last 10 years, really, to be honest, quite frankly, um, I gave Kelly my number and he's kept in, con you know, in constant contact with me. Um, over the years, you know, I put more of an effort into our friendship. I, I understand him a little bit more and I don't know. I've grown to actually care for the guy, girl. And I don't know, he's just become one of my friends. So I'm a moderator on the True to Tiffany Yahoo group, which doesn't make me a Psycho Stalker fan. It just makes me a nice girl who's in front of my computer too much. I met Jeff on the beach at the Tiffany show last year. He kept swooping in and, oh, well, in uh, 1992, Tiffany performed that at blah, 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 blah. He said something about how she worked so hard to protect him, and I said, Honey, no. See, when all of the security guards swoop in and surround you, it's not because Tiffany's protecting you. <laughs> it's because Tiffany's afraid of you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any fan that's that avid and is so completely far from grounded in reality can be safe. And I don't think Tiffany thinks he's safe, because if she did, all of those security guards wouldn't be standing there ready and waiting for him. These books were created by the uh, uh, so, uh, Association of Threat Management and Threat Assessment Professional People uh, as part of the massive uh, psychological operation of the whole stalking thing, the new McCarthyism obsessed stalker witch hunt. Another book, Stalking and Psychosexual Obsession. Boy, they really get gushy on these titles. <laughs> Yes, autism, Asperger's, uh, those people who are diagnosed, they are obsessed about certain things or people or inanimate objects. They, I, I, I can't identify with that, so. I think he, in all honesty, he is obsessed, but he's not a, a dangerous. He's not a danger to Tiffany or anybody else. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Tiffany's epiphany. I'll pose for Playboy. Oh, here's one of these articles where uh, pop singer Tiffany's husband tries to hang himself. And this was one of those frozen margarita brawls. There were two. <laughs> oh, here's Tiffany's graduation from high school. Here's an article about the sword. Samurai fan arrested as he waits for pop star Tiffany with a sword. <laughs> the time that Jeff went down to the Los Angeles Superior Court with the sword and chrysanthemums was probably a high point in the uh, uh, the comic opera story of Jeff Turner's life. I thought a card flowers would be sufficient. I don't know what the purpose of giving Tiffany a weapon would be. <laughs> giving someone a, a katana and five white chrysanthemums, that is about the highest honor you could uh, give someone as a ceremonial presentation in Japan. Never got to give it to her. Um, my, my father served this great country of ours 
uh, in the Vietnam War. Um, my father was one of the people that were were overly exposed to uh, to Agent Orange, uh, a very cancerous chemical. Um, oh my gosh, does that mean I'm an orange meat turkey? Help me, God the God the body. <laughs> My mother and father got, I had split custody of, of my sister and I, where my mom raised me to be her younger daughter. Come summertime, uh, I had to be my, my father's, um, like, un United States Marine Corps son. I had to put all my Barbie dolls away, uh, all my dresses and skirts, whatnot. It felt like I, the guy had a leash around me. Uh, he was forcing me to be something that, that I wasn't. This is who I really am, and um, I'm not I'm not a guy whatsoever. Um. Yeah, well, I uh, worked at the high school cafeteria, and then I got out of high school, went to work, and just worked uh, through about 1984, and uh, then employers wouldn't hire me anymore. And uh, so I got the, uh, three and a half years later, got the uh, federal disability. And then he made the foolish decision to go on disability, which is probably the single most unwise decision he ever made in his life. Because he is employable. So I uh, receive income uh, once a month, SSI, from the federal government. And then I receive also a rent subsidy of HUD that pays four-fifths of the rent. I received uh, $643 a month um, from, from the federal government. Um, the government pays like three quarters of my rent um, because of, of my disability and because of, of, uh, of my housing -like situation. A lot of people think Jeff Turner is a crazed stalker, a madman, but I know him very well, and there's a different side of this story. Nobody in this, uh, who sees this documentary is gonna believe, but Jeff has connections. And uh, it, it goes into the whole nature of secret societies and the secret society matrix that's behind the scenes in this country. He knows stuff that is not public information. I have a master's in history, and so I can talk on Jeff's level, and at this point I've confirmed a lot of Jeff's information. When Jeff t uh, kind of debriefed me, I immediately started talking to people and say, this is what's really going on. There's a bunch of secret society uh, rivalries and these different satanic cults basically are fighting for control of the streets. People are getting killed that are involved in this stuff. Radionic, cyanic, psychotronic devices, Nikola Tesla, uh, great electrophysicist discoverer. Yeah. The brain is a natural transceiver. Uh, the heat built machines that amplify that. Supposedly he got it from the real people. He got it from the real legitimate radionics crowd. On the radionic, cyanic, psychotronic devices, I've spent, uh, uh, related things, I've spent about $20,000. Uh, there are some, they'll use photographs or personal objects and they'll, uh, they'll tune it specifically, their dials and everything, they'll tune it specifically to the resonant frequencies of a person. 
never, I never asked for a lock of hair. Or, <laughs> I might ask for a fingernail or a toenail, a lock of hair, or a, or a scab, or a skin from a blister or something. I could ask for that, but it just never happened <laughs> that I've asked for that. <laughs> I mean, Jeff is shabbily dressed because he's spending all his money on radionics equipment, on experimental physics books and books about time travel, space-time continuum books. Uh. Actually, I put this on. Uh, I'm in communication. Uh, in a spiritual sense and a spiritual level with Tiffany actually because yeah. the whole thing is set up for her to be communicate with her mm, it's peacefulness just awareness yeah. but uh, yeah yeah like uh well, Tiffany and I are uh, linked anyway this way, but this uh, this uh, increases it and amplifies it. Yeah. It seems like Kelly's trapped in the 80s, is obsessed with the 80s. I think it was um, all caused by his accident that he had back in the 80s. June 18th, 1987, I was involved in a critical bicycle accident. I was coming to us for 16 days. All right, um, I actually saw uh, Tiffany, I am I'm being together with with the person that looked exactly. I mean, to to be uh, to be T. After I woke up out of the coma, June uh, July fourth, nineteen eighty seven. Well, my sister handed me uh, my, a Walkman. I was barely able to even move at that point in time. The very first song I heard was Tiffany's "I Think We're Alone Now." And then, then, then I, I, I asked my sister if she could bring me a picture of her. I'm not kidding. You know, I almost fell back right back in the coma because, you know, there, there she was. Until that point, I never even heard of Tiffany. It's, it's been my own personal mission ever since then, you know, to be with, you know, uh, to follow through with this, uh, with this vision I had. In year 2004, in June, uh, I was asked. I asked Tiffany if she wanted to marry me, and she says, "No, I can't. I'm marrying uh, Ben George." Uh, <laughs> and I said, "Wonderful. I'm happy for you. It's your decision. I'm all for you, and you go for it. You go, gal." Uh, I like Ben George. He's a very taciturn, serious, reserved Englishman. I'm not meaning this in, in a negative way towards towards Tiffany, but. But uh, when she married Ben, um, so she, uh, so she brought a lot of, of uh, negativity and a lot of depression out upon me. For some reason that he is uh, block, you know, trying to block me, uh, like, like a defensive and uh, uh, like intercepting a football. Uh, and, and running it back maybe 15, 20 yards before being tackled. Well, uh, one of my new best friends, Ben George. Ben George, Tiffany, and myself, uh, February year 2005 at the Hollywood Collectors and Celebrities Show. We got it. <laughs> yeah, I think you can see the look on his face there. He's is uh, the look in his eyes. He's exuding jealousy. <laughs> I mean, look at the look in his eyes. I mean, does that look like the green-eyed monster of jealousy? Yes, it does. My my destiny is I'm supposed to be with Tiffany. I'm not kidding you. I'm I'm not making any any of this up. I mean, uh, if I am, put shackles on me, take me to fucking jail. Because you know what. I have the right, you know, to love and be happy. I'm sick and fucking tired of, of this bullshit, 
I'm being pushed out of Tiffany's life when I'm supposed to be in it. Hey, Tiffany's had more than one very dangerous, uh, one of her managers called them ferocious stalkers. <laughs> and Robert John Bardo came with his 357 Rossi, that's a very powerful handgun, to a Tiffany concert in Phoenix in 1988. Tiffany's security stopped him and prevented that. Then he went on to murder actress Rebecca Schaefer in uh, 1989. After that, uh, Tiffany's people were uh, very angry and proactive about the uh, stalkers. You've heard of the singer yeah. Tiffany? Yeah, she's going to be here. She was here last year. What happened was, is the, uh, the first half of the show, uh, there was hardly anyone came here and you and it was easy to get a seat right over here in the first half of the show now the second half of the show it got real crowded and people uh, were allowed to go up you know to the up to the near the edge of the stage and crank their head back and then several uh, whole bunch of lesbians climbed up on the stage and started groping her and butt bumping her and hugging her and uh, she was fine with that only uh, the security handcuffed about eight people till they ran out of handcuffs. I came after the show was over. They had about eight people sitting on the ground in handcuffs. And when they ran out of handcuffs, to Paul, Big Paul, he just went and was just throwing people off the stage that did that. And they and they stage dived into the audience. I'm a friend of Tiffany's, and uh, I was here last year with this. I just talked to Tiffany about this last month. So, uh, we saw each other for two days. I mean, we are friends. We got towel. pictures, and uh, that's my towel. Oh, so you're a big fan. A friend. Friend. We're friends, yeah. Well, and a fan. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's true, but friend first. Okay. I am so excited about Tiffany coming to Denver tonight. Tiffany truly is my everything, and um, my heart, my, my body, my soul <laughs> longs to see her again. my dream can't come true tonight. Damn, I thought there'd be people here by now, but uh, I'll uh, ask her how Elijah's, uh, how Elijah, her son, is doing and make it more about her instead of more about me. dedicated fans it dates back to our teenage years for us and there's always something special about your childhood fantasy or your childhood dream. Tiffany 20 years ago I had to um, um, see the new kids on the block unfortunately live just to see her live and so I, she was the opening act so uh, right after she was off though I was off. When I was a lost lonely teenager that had no friends and I was sitting in my room with the door shut all day I would play Tiffany's albums and dream of maybe one day meeting this person and then that all kind of came true for me. And Tiffany definitely rocks. 20 years now, big fan of hers. 
Her new album, Just Me, rocks. Probably one of the best albums ever recorded. Uh, Be All Right, Just Me, great songs. And anyone being around Tiffany, meeting her just once, I've seen their life is transformed. She was such a big part of my youth. Um, All right. I, she, shaped, she shaped the person I am today, really, you know. She, Tiffany, could have been. Tiffany has shaped the person I am. I am a completely different person than I would be without Tiffany. She is a dear friend of mine. She declared, called me on the phone at home in 2000 and said, I'm your best friend, mentor, and protector. Tiffany has done so much for me. She has transformed my life. Hey, Lewis, hey, it's me. Um, uh, slight change of plans. I'm not going to the Tiffany concert after all. Um, and I'll explain it to you later on um, why I'm not going to, uh, to the Tipton concert, and yes, I'm very, I'm very upset. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, because of the fact that, that I have a photocopy of my ID because I lost it. Uh, I lost it so, some time ago. Um, I, I got a photocopy of my ID, but that wasn't good enough. Because I was gonna, I was going to talk with Tiffany and hopefully work everything out between us. Future between Tiffany and I are very bleak. Uh, it's very bleak right now. Unfortunately, you know, I don't know if Tiffany and I, if Tiffany and I. We'll never have a future together. GlamourCon is an annual convention for erotic models, adult film stars, and the like, and Tiffany was there because she posed for Playboy. It's a place where people go to make friends and renew friendships, and that's what basically it is. Need butterflies? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm human as anybody else. <laughs> oh, there she comes. Hey, how are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I will see you. I, I got some gifts for you, and we're okay. gonna stuff. Also. <laughs> I'm running late as usual. <laughs> I know. I, I, I told the people you're fashionably late. <laughs> Everyone at this big convention event, there was thousands of people there. And I ministered, uh, God sent me to minister to hundreds of people and found out uh, most of the attendees and the featured people there are saved. And I didn't see anyone acting mean-spirited. Everyone just loved everyone there and was concerned about everyone. Okay. Four different playboys that are foreign that you were in, that you're in, in the wow. centerfold. Okay. So that is my that gift is, to you. Thank you so much. That's so, so sweet. So, yeah. I didn't even know I was in these. Of course, uh, Tiffany was uh, really uh, the most, still the most Christ-like person I've ever known. And uh, God really uh, came through her and was manifested uniquely in her. And that was just uh, really nice there. And we had a uh, really good time in the Lord there. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs>
it came, it flashed. As long as it flashes, okay, well, uh, I'll be here tomorrow. I have, I have a room in the hotel, and uh, if, if you would like to number, you may have it. I, I remember, uh, we have an, you and I have an agreement. We don't hide anything from each other. I keep no secrets from you at all. Yeah, and, and you're about the only one on earth that is true for <laughs> about Kelly um, uh, I wanted to uh, meet with her uh, is that uh, she really showed a spiritual connection with Tiffany very similar to the one I have I found out about this uh, Tiffany concert at a nightclub in Las Vegas found out Kelly was going to go when I hear about someone who has an affinity for uh, Tiffany like I do I want to meet them and make friends with them this concert um, on Friday in Las Vegas will be the very first uh, live Tiffany concert that, that, that I've been to. Personally, I call him a male because I see him as male. That's just, uh, you, you, with a hermaphrodite, you can take your pick. I, I live full time as a male. I mean, geez, these are real. I'm, I'm uh, bound on hormones for geez, about seven years now. And in fact, I'm totally stoked that, uh, that uh, the Broncos just signed the legendary Jerry Rice as a fourth string receiver. Yeah, well, I don't have much interest in sports. So. Oh, wow. Uh, Bar, are you actually gay or what? I'm straight. Mm -hmm. That's straight. Yeah, I just fight against fascism. <laughs> the reason why I, I'm staying with Jeff Turner is because uh, I don't have that much money, and I'm, I'm very limited on my options of what, what I can and cannot do. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> Toby! Well, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, Jeff. Um, I'm, I'm not looking uh, for like a one night stand. I want, you know, I just don't want sex with her. I want her friendship as well. We have a committed best friendship, and I will recommend you and say you're okay and. Uh, and, and when, she, uh, she's your, when she's your best friend, you couldn't have a better friend. Um, That's a cool jacket. All right. Then I'm going to be wearing that with this skirt. Um, and where's the hoop earrings? <laughs> yeah, you, you're round, Jeff. 
Oh yeah, the jewel. They'll match your hair. Huh. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it my my uh, makeup up really good. There, there's help you get rid of your roll, your gut yeah. roll. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of that gut roll without having to have a body sculpt. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're doing yeah. great. <laughs> Some of my, my, my willpower is keeping me awake right now. It's the only thing keeping me awake. until I am starting to slow down a little bit and yes I am getting tired but as you can see mind over matter equals positive thoughts and there's something I've got to get done tonight so I'm not going to sleep until I get it done because I've been waiting 14, for almost 14 years for this and I'm not going to slow down now So bad. It's not. It's. It's not even funny. I mean, I know Jeff says that uh, Tiffany means a lot to him too, but all on is, I think I've got. I think I've got him outmatched easy. I expect the worst, but I hope for the best. I'll always be ready for 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 the worst. Uh, but this one, I'm not ready for. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know how uh, anywhere anywhere else to put this, but uh, I, I'm I'm almost guaranteed. I'm almost sure that Tiffany will remember me. Uh, you, like you think so, Jeff? Yeah, I sure do.
Maybe Tiffany is not going home to Denver with me tomorrow night. However, I have, yeah, I've, I've got something more important than, than just that, and, and that is her, uh, her everlasting friendship. And I mean, and anyone in love knows uh, that, that you must start off as friends, uh, very strong, very positive friends. Otherwise, you, you would scare the person, so. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be totally redundant and uh, ridiculous if I say that, um, the biggest ambition uh, that I could ever have just came true. That's not redundant at all. That's wonderful. I'm glad you said that. Because being with her is one of my, uh, probably is one of my two or three biggest ambitions, is being with her and being and continuing our friendship that it continues to grow. She actually kissed me on the cheek as well as, I mean. One, wonderful. I'm yeah, very happy I, for I mean, both. I'm, I'm, I, I just cannot put it into words how I feel right now. I remember the first time uh, Tiffany actually reached out in front of over 500 people and kissed me on the cheek and made a point of doing it. It was in February 1989 in San Jose. Mm -hmm. And there was over 500 people there and we were walking... Uh, uh, excuse me, Jeff. Um, um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... Uh, I mean, jeez, you're, you're, you're taking words out of my mouth. All right? Because that, that was completely unfair. In the discussion. Oh, yeah. He treats everyone unique and individual. You know it. But with equal love. Or should I say unlimited love? You can't measure love. <laughs> so it's immeasurable. Huh? Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you at some more Tiffany events yeah, in the same future. Here. Same yeah. here. Uh, dearest Tiffany, hi. How is my one and, one and only lady doing? I'm okay. Uh, that, that was one extremely good concert last night. Uh, this road trip was a huge success, especially when, when we talked uh, for, for a few minutes uh, after the concert. It felt so, so very good when we kissed each other uh, when, and, and hugged each other. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad uh, that, that you remembered me. Um, I, really, I really love you so much. Ten years, see myself married. <laughs> Don't know if I have children or not, but I uh, see myself as married. Uh, a lot's changed in my life. Uh, <laughs> the realization of Alyssa, which is uh, really nice. Mm, I can't marry Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible. So, <laughs> if it were, if Tiffany was available to marry, and and then Alyssa being available. Uh, have to make a choice between the two of them, I'd uh, probably choose Alyssa. Okay. Here's the two uh, uh, CDs of Alyssa. Er they're erotic art films of Alyssa. I don't know why I have two of these, but uh, yeah, that's uh, Alyssa on the set of Charm, the last season. Interesting little study. <laughs> Way too much eye makeup. <laughs> Way too much grease.
Um, I've had tremendous help um, uh, staying away from drugs from from my very best friend Abby. Uh, Abby actually uh, helps to make me feel more like my real self. Uh, uh, Abby makes me feel more like a woman <laughs> and less of the athletic machine that I am. That's exactly, that's exactly where, where I was aiming for. Oh my God. I have known Kelly for about a year and a half, and her and I met in a doctor's office. I never seen anybody that looked like Kelly in reference to her outside appearance. Kelly often just ignores people's comments about her being an intersex. They oftentimes ask me, is that a boy or is that a girl? She is one of the strongest people I've ever met. Um, Kelly and I both like beer a lot, so we will occasionally go to a small local bar and, and uh, drink beers together. Uh, the I feel that uh, Abby really likes about me is, you know, I'm, I'm always funny, you know, that helps to bring her back up to where, where she's happy again. Yeah, here, I got a bad idea for you. Uh, how about if I go call a fabulous to come stick in there holes in your biceps to pump you off? Because I'm Hans from Hans of Franz. Saturday Night Live, I'm here to pump you off, yeah. <laughs> she extends herself out and goes the extra mile for every person that she knows. She is an incredible, incredible listener and has been there for me whenever I need her. Coming up here in, in a couple of weeks, I will be getting a job as a bicycle courier, um, and I will be uh, flying around the, uh, the Mile High City streets at, at extreme speeds. Um, my case manager and my psychologist both are trying to uh, get me breast implants. Watch out for new spirits. <laughs> Uh, they're going to surgically love, like remove my male gender, but I'm I'm going to be you know finally complete and I'm going to be finally happy uh, with, with who I am uh, on the inside as well as on the outside. Uh, if someone else came along, I uh, yeah I, I would definitely look into the possibilities of of dating uh, a woman. Um, uh, and the one that, of course, I mean, I, I prefer the down-to-earth type, so I mean, when out there, uh, if any girl out there is interested, uh, uh, yeah, here's my number flashing across the screen. <laughs> it took a week of work to uh, get, this play, uh, get this cleaned up. <laughs> Needed to clean it up for a long time, and uh, so we finally got rid of uh, uh, two dumpster dumpsters worth of stuff. <laughs> the bathroom is improved and uh, the bathtub's clean and uh, a new mattress. <laughs> We're a new mattress. That old ratty thing is gone. I used to be in love with a Tiffany, but Tiffany and I have always had our friendship. You have to be absolutely sure what you're getting into when you make a commitment of friendship, to stand by that friendship no matter what anyone can throw at you, any grief anyone can give you. The commitment of just friendship, it has to stand. Uh, it's the journey that, that brings us happiness, not, not the destination. Regardless of what happens, uh, whether uh, whether I'm with Tiffany or not, the one thing that I've pulled out, you know, one one thing that I've learned from from all this, is um, mm -hmm. Tiffany has taught me how uh, to be much stronger, um, uh, to be a much stronger person, and to actually believe in myself.